When I first joined, it was just community. It was just people together to get good deals on parts or communication on sharing knowledge. And it expanded to be so much more than that. So I didn't expect it to be this giant group of right now over 6,000 members of people who communicate, pass knowledge on what Hondas are. And it's that community that makes people stick around. It's that when something goes wrong, 40 people out of nowhere step up and say, hey, I'm here to help, even though you don't know somebody. One of the greatest stories of the club that happened probably two years ago was a gentleman driving down Highway 1 south of Langley and his engine just blew up on the side of the freeway, completely toast into pieces. He posted in the club saying like, I'm screwed, my car's done on the side of the road, does someone have a tow truck? And a couple of comments, tow truck recommendations, but another guy said, hey, how about I drive my truck there and swap your engine on the side of the freeway? So they went there with a lift and four guys and an engine and they pulled his engine on the side of the freeway, put a new one in, wired it up, and he was driving out of there within the next few hours. And that just shows the community of the club of people who didn't ask for a lot, just had free time, had the spare engine, and wanted to help out. When COVID first initially hit, we meets were still allowed to happen in small groups, and then all of a sudden there was nothing. And we were told we can't have any meets, no major stuff. Other clubs were having meets because they weren't uh, recognized, they weren't a full like, not-for-profit or anything. And because of that, we followed strict rules and the guidelines from the government, other clubs didn't. And it was a big letdown for a lot of our members because there seemed like other clubs have meets and we can't. We wanted to keep our members' safety as the number one priority and maintain our reputation in the community as well, respect we have with the police and other organizations because of who we are and what we are and what we stand for. Oh, absolutely. We basically tried to go in to see what we could do for protocols for the COVID pandemic stuff to base what the government was putting out. We had to shut down all our open car meets and just couldn't do that stuff there. So everything had to go virtual. It was, uh, when any person meets had to be canceled, it was really like a letdown because it has the, the Friday night look, look forward to things. Cause like I said, a lot of people Friday nights end their night and that was their big get out was to come to the car meet to show the car off, see other people's cars and stuff like that there. And it's basically a social time to have your coffee and whatnot and hang out and talk. For me, the pandemic didn't hit me as hard as a lot of other people did, but keeping me busy was definitely something that kept me distracted and kind of helped me not even think about that kind of thing. But having a car definitely keeps your mind off of a lot of things. It is something that takes up a lot of your time, especially if you're interested in it and interested in modifying it or driving it and racing it, whatever. When you've got a car, you're always looking for things to do to it. And I think that discussing with other members really kept that engagement up. But it, yeah, it definitely took a dip during the pandemic for just actually engaging with other people that you know. Because a lot of the people that you were used to seeing every week or every couple of weeks, you just didn't really interact with. Getting back into the regular swing of meets was uh, it was a bit of a challenge. We didn't know how to approach it at first. Um, there was a lot of people who were hesitant to come back out again because people are afraid of, you know, if you all go too quickly at once, then it's going to blow up again. It was great. Like, so we had the one big event there we finally announced and we basically filled the parking lot at the Tim Hortons there in Langley and stuff there with every possible Honda you could possibly see, plus a few other small groups that are associated with the BC Honda Owners Club. They brought their groups out, so it was a, a big showing. It was just a, a big event and it felt great to see everybody out there. It was actually really great because seeing all these people that you haven't seen in a while is, is really great. It's, um, it's good for your mental health, um, especially just meeting people, right? The only direction the club's ever gone is up. Uh, it's grown exponentially since COVID happened. It's grown from the day I took over as president of the club. We were at 400 members when I first started, which was a very small group of people. And it's grown bigger than I or anyone on the team could have ever imagined. It's a big part of my life now that I didn't think it was going to be. It went from me having fun on weekends and going to a couple car meets to investing most of my free time into a club that I know and love and devote everything to and have an amazing time with friends, family, and new people we meet every day.